The heart is a muscle, which regularly contracts and relaxes to pump oxygen-rich blood through the blood vessels to the organs, muscles and nerves. It is composed of four hollow chambers, two atria and two ventricles. The contraction of the heart muscle is controlled by electrical signals that spread through the heart tissue. A special area called the sinoatrial node repeatedly sends out tiny electrical impulses to the left and right atria, causing them to contract and squeeze blood into the two ventricles. The electrical impulse then travels through a collection of cells called the atrioventricular node to the ventricles, causing them to contract simultaneously. This pumps blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. At rest, a normal heart beats between 60 and 100 times a minute. When a patient stops breathing normally and his heart is beating erratically or not at all, you can substitute manual chest compressions for the heart's normal pumping action to circulate blood through the body. The blood you push through the patient's body will carry some oxygen to important organs. Your willingness to respond may increase the patient's chance for survival until emergency medical service personnel arrive. CPR is a two-step process. Step 1, chest compressions, followed by Step 2, rescue breathing. In this skill, you'll learn how to perform chest compressions. Begin, as usual, by assessing the scene for safety. Next, check the patient for unresponsiveness by giving the responder statement. After delivering the responder statement, quickly check for an open airway and normal breathing. Here's an important note about normal breathing. In the first few minutes after cardiac arrest, a patient may be barely breathing or taking infrequent noisy gasps. This is often termed agonal breathing, and these gasps must not be confused with normal breathing. Many patients in cardiac arrest make these gasping sounds. Position the patient on his back if not already in this position. If necessary, expose the patient's chest. Find the compression site by putting the heel of one hand in the chest center. On some individuals, this position is between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the hand already on the chest and interlock your fingers. Use the palm of your hand on the compression site. Allow your body weight to deliver the compressions. To provide effective chest compressions, you should push hard and push fast, depressing the breastbone approximately one-third the depth of the patient's chest, at least five centimeters, two inches. After each chest compression, release, allowing the chest to return to its normal position. Repeat at a pace of one, two, three, four, and so on for 30 chest compressions. Perform the compressions as fluidly as possible. Your rate should be at least 100 compressions per minute. The rate is a lot faster than most people think. Push hard and push fast. Do not perform chest compressions on someone who does not need CPR. After delivering 30 chest compressions, quickly position a ventilation barrier on the patient and open the patient's airway. To open the patient's airway, you will use the head tilt chin lift. First, place your hand on the patient's forehead. Next, apply firm backward pressure with the palm of your hand, tilting the head back, like this. Place the fingers of your other hand under the bony part of one side of the lower jaw near the chin. Avoid pushing directly under the chin. Lift the jaw upward to bring the chin forward. This immediately opens the airway. Now, with the patient's head tilted back and the ventilation barrier in place, begin your rescue breaths by pinching his nose closed. Give two rescue breaths with each lasting about one second. Provide the patient with just enough air to make the patient's chest rise. Look for this rise in the patient's chest. If you can't make the patient's chest rise with the first breath, repeat the head tilt chin lift to reopen the airway before attempting another breath. Improper position of the head tilt chin lift is the most common cause for not being able to inflate a patient's lungs. Do not try more than two rescue breaths to make the chest rise. Minimize delay between chest compressions. After two breaths, whether they make the chest rise or not, Begin chest compressions again. Seven, 
after delivering two rescue breaths, immediately begin another cycle of 30 compressions. Continue alternating 30 compressions with two breaths until emergency medical service personnel arrive. You can defibrillate using an automated external defibrillator. The patient becomes responsive and begins to breathe normally. Another emergency responder arrives and takes over your CPR efforts. Or lastly, you are too exhausted to continue.